So Lens Studio recently released a Gen AI suite which allows you to create immersive experiences like this which applies to the entire camera field as well as 3D models, PBR materials, um, garments uh, attached with 3D body tracking all incredibly quickly. So as a little kid I discovered both Art Deco and Art Nouveau and was incredibly inspired so that was one of my first experiments was to bring those art movements to life in real time in the real world using an immersive lens and here were the results. So the fact that I was able to bring the aesthetic of these art movements that I really love to the real world in real time like so easily really really blew my mind. Like on top of the fact that both of these art movements are in fact a response to the technologies of their time and I was able to use the technology of my time to um, bring it to life like in a new way. Like all of that just felt like so exciting and it was genuinely so easy so like I knew that I had to share and uh, create this video because I want to see what you guys create. Okay, let's dig in. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is download and install the latest version of Lens Studio. They came out with 5.0 in the last year and it's uh, it was a complete rebuild for Lens Studio and it's just a really powerful piece of software. It's, it's absolutely one of my favorite AR authoring applications. So download it, install it. I've already done that. You will know that you have 5.0 when you launch it. And in the left-hand corner, you're going to see a new tab, which says Gen AI Suite. Okay, so we know we're, we're running the proper version. So let's dig in. Um, the first thing that you can do with AI is there's like an assistant chatbot, essentially. So you can ask it questions about how to do specific things, where specific things are located, and it's going to answer you directly in the interface, which you can see from these instructions when I asked it about creating a face mask. Um, it's really it's straightforward. It's integrated into the experience. So you don't have to like hunt down a bunch of stuff in uh, Google. The next thing is where the magic happens, the button that says Gen AI. So let's dig into this. There are a bunch of different um, effects and objects that you can create with Gen AI. Um, as you can see from this list, we have um, face effects, immersive ML effects, which is like totally like uh, affects everything in the camera's view. You can generate 3D assets. You can generate um, head morphing. Um, which with a proper 3D model, which is actually tracked to people's expressions. And you can do face masks, you can do PBR materials, so very realistic materials that are highly reactive to lighting situations. You can create textures if you wanted to create like a tileable floor um, or something like that. And you can even generate um, uh, 3D models and materials for specific garments. So you can do um, you know, like experimental, like fun fashion, incredibly fast. So let's start at the top. Face effects, right? Everybody knows what face filters are. You can use either a text prompt or an image prompt. I have used both. You can also use presets up here. Everything from emotions, beauty, cartoon, fun, creepy, etc. If you want to, you know, push it in a specific vibe. You can also um, affect how much of the user's identity you want to maintain within the face effect. So let's just go ahead and look at some of these that I have created. Let's go ahead and look at Elon Musk. This was, again, just a silly test. And you can tell that, yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting some musky, some musk off of these images. Now, if you wanted to um, create any of, the, any of these and actually put them into your experience, you have to not only generate the preview, but also generate the model. Um, so let's click on one which I have not done that to. So this one I just typed in big-eyed alien just to kind of see what it would do. Let's say that I wanted to actually create an effect with this. I would hit create model. We can go ahead and do that right now. And then it's actually going to create the ML model in the background. It will take a few hours, anywhere from five to six hours. I've had it be even faster, frankly, but you don't have to do anything at this point. You don't even have to save your project. You can just close it out. It's going to work in the background. When you come back a few hours later, you can check it out and import it into your project. So I have already done that with um, this one, which I find really creepy, but I like it. So I used an image prompt um, for this particular uh, effect. And you can tell that it like, I don't know, there's like a painterly, uh, creepy um, sort of, I don't know, I, I find it really fascinating. So I think I actually am going to create this. I already generated the model. 
If I wanted to go ahead and make an effect with this, since I've already generated the model, this is turned into an import to project. I can hit import into project and it's automatically going to apply it. So you can tell over here in the preview panel that, uh, yeah, we're good to go. So the next thing that you can create is an immersive um, experience. So this is going to affect everything in the camera's view in a stylized way and you're basically training it how to uh, create the stylization. So you can use, again, a text prompt or an image prompt. I have actually used both. Let's go ahead and click on this one which I just generated. Uh, I said anime, flat shading, which is how you designate that you want that um, abstracted like sort of cartoon look. Uh, retrofuturism, stars and pastel. Let's just sort of see what it did. And yeah, you can tell that that is definitely an anime style. I have also used um, images to uh, as prompts. And let's go ahead and look at one of my earlier versions. I used one of my own illustrations. I have the very sort of textured painterly style. I used this image just to kind of see what it would do. And you can tell there there is texture as though, you know, it was made with um, charcoal or pastel or something like that. And it also abstracted and distilled the shapes a little bit um, with, with like a flat shading sort of approach. I used another illustration of mine. This one's a little bit more chrome and 3D based and um, you can see how it created a very chrome looking experience. Not exactly flattering, but that's kind of the fun of this is that we, we get to experiment, see how it affects things and um, you know, not everything has to be beautiful. So for this Art Deco uh, one, I typed in Art Deco, geometric, clean lines, limited color palette. I even misspelled limited. Uh, gradients, abstracted, floral, inspired by Metropolis, which is an excellent movie. And you can tell that it did it did an amazing job. Like sometimes it inserts these, you know, geometric patterns in places they wouldn't normally go. But like, I love that. Like I find it really fascinating. But let's go ahead and apply this stained glass one. So I this is a stained glass inspired lens. You can see my prompt there. I used flat shading. And it really does a good job of creating that like stained glass look. Now I've already created this ML model. Let's say I wanted to apply this as a lens and actually publish it. You hit import into project. It's really that simple. <laughs> I mean, it's it blows my mind how fast this is. Now if I wanted to test this on, you know, different uh, models, you can select any one of these up here. And if you wanted to test it on device, which I would recommend, you hit send to device. It's going to pop up on my phone and then I can test it and see if it actually looks the way that I want to. And that's it. At this point, you can publish it if you want to um, uh, or experiment more. So let's move to the next thing, which is 3D assets. I think this is pretty straightforward. Again, you can use um, a text prompt uh, in addition to uh, an image prompt as well as negative prompts. So this one gives you a little bit more like fine fine tune um, structure to define exactly what you want. But I've had pretty good results with it. This was an alien flower that I created. If you hit import into project, it's just going to import it directly like an asset in your panel. I will hit import. It's going to give you some information about poly counts and textures, etc. You hit import. And that's that. Head Morph allows you to create a 3D model, which is then attached to, um, to the person. So this is a prompt that I used. I was trying to create some sort of like biomechanical uh, robot um, using like plants and flowers and fungi and stuff. And you can tell that it didn't quite get that part of the prompt in here. But uh, when I used Cthulhu, um, it knew exactly what I wanted. So let's go ahead and import into project and you'll, you'll see how this can, can be useful. It's attached to, to people's actual facial expressions like blinking and stuff. So you can see that um, that would really help for uh, selling the illusion. You can also create face masks. So this is more of like, um, like a flat uh, texture which is going to be applied to somebody's face. Uh, we could use one of the prompts that they've given us um, just for ease. So let's see what Albert Einstein looks like. Can it generate? Yep, looks like Einstein to me. You can hit regenerate until you find one that you like. And then once you're happy with whatever the texture is, um, let's go ahead and hit apply and it's actually going to import it as an image in your uh, asset browser which you'll you'll then have to apply manually to um, to a face mask but 
but yeah, it just creates an asset for you. You can also create PBR materials. So these are materials that are um, very realistic, that are very reactive to light. Um, and so you will want to start with whatever your 3D model is um, so that it can create a more accurate um, set of textures for it. Okay, the next option is to uh, generate textures. So you can use this to create like a, a tileable floor or something like that, um, or you know generate like a hyper photorealistic background image uh, if you need. Um, there's a lot of different options here. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, but let's dip into garments just because I think this is really fun. So using one of these types of garments, you can automatically generate a 3D model which is applied to um, 3D body tracking and with a, a texture and, and sort of look and feel um, that you can define. So let's say if we wanted to do um, like a bomber jacket and we wanted like a drip style, for example, and I say like neon colors. It's not drippy, but it's cool. Let's go ahead and just import it just to, to show you that process. So we've imported it. And now if I if I zoom out a little bit, you'll, you'll be able to see sort of more of a full bodied um, tracking. You can tell it's like, it does a great job of, um, you know, actually applying it to the, the body as it moves and distorting those materials so that it gives like a, a more realistic impression. And that's it. As you can tell, these tools are really powerful and honestly just like a lot of fun to play with. So I would recommend you just explore and uh, see what happens. If this has been useful, please like and subscribe. I'm an artist and technologist that's always making weird experiments and I try to share my journey as I go along. And with that, as always, happy making.